So, now we will go a little bit about the reduction mechanism though we did not talk uh, this reduction mechanism uh, when we were uh, discussing about the uh, reduction in the stake region in the blast furnace, um, but in this direct reduction we would be discussing about this now uh, and this would be again relevant to the blast furnace stake region also. So, mostly the raw material in direct reduction is in the form of pellets or briquettes which are dense in nature. So, in direct reduction you use uh, the or either in the form of pellets or briquettes. So, these are actually sometimes composite uh, not composite pellets, but such a uh, iron or raw material iron or pellets um, in a, a briquette form or pellet form you use that one and many times they are dense in nature. So, reduction usually occurs by removing the oxygen from the oxide of the iron in steps. So, this reduction may involve two types of broad mechanism one is topochemical and another is non topochemical. So, I am not going too much into the detail of this um, because this involves more transport processes um, especially the mass transfer of the species and which I am not sure how many of you uh, who are uh, taking this course and I believe they are undergraduate student are familiar with the transport phenomena and those uh, mass transfer and heat transfer. That is why I concise, uh, consciously avoid even the heat transfer uh, 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 mentioning heat transfer in this whole course um, because again I am not sure how many of you are aware of it. So, the mechanism are mostly topochemical and non topochemical. So, in topochemical reduction mechanism the reducible gas reacts at the gas solid interface to produce iron and further reaction takes place by diffusion of the reducible gas through the product layer to reach the unreacted material. You will understand this more um, in the next slide where the figure is there and it, so, but remember in this the reducible gas react at the gas solid interface to produce iron and further reaction takes place only by diffusion of this reducible gas through the product layer to reach the unreacted material. However, in non topochemical mechanism the porosity of the raw material is very high. When the porosity is very high the reducing uh, uh, gas can reach almost everywhere in the, uh, in the pellets or briquettes. So, the reaction occurs almost everywhere in a uniform way inside the pellets. So, diffusion is not there in that case and I know uh, you must be familiar about this diffusion and other things uh, um, and so that terminology should not be a new one for you. So, in direct reduction of iron the topochemical mechanism of reduction is prevalent which is shown schematically in the figure below. So, usually this is the pellet the solid line. So, it is showing the half cross section of that uh, is of a spherical pellet. So, dense pellet uh, of iron oxide. So, uh, uh, so it is a like a Fe 2 or 3 pellets and when the reducing gas is coming into the contact is the CO or hydrogen. Then at the uh, so when a reducing gas is coming into contact it is naturally it makes near the solid a very thin film of the gas. So, that is actually what we call the gas boundary layer. So, when reducing gases are flowing through this uh, 
uh, on the surface of the particle. So, they form a, and they, they get actually stick to the surface of that and that sometime in very low velocity just near the surface of the particle uh, exist of the gas and usually you call that one as a boundary layer. And then at this the, because gas is having a C O or a hydrogen, it immediately reacts with the F E O 2 F E 2 or 3 to F E uh, then convert to F E 3 O to F E O to F E. So, after reduction of this it form ion or first it will form magnetite then some C O will come out. So, when it will form magnetite so oxygen C O will come out it will become bit more porous. So, now C O 2 will come out uh, uh, sorry it is uh, after C O C O 2 will come out. So, C O will go in C O 2 will come out that then more C O would uh, replace the C O 2 which is coming out C O 2 now has to diffuse out through this thin layer of the gas which formed here. So, C O 2 is diffused out from that and C O also has to diffuse into this thin layer of the gas to reach further or to reduce this further. So, then it reduces to F E O again C O 2 is formed which comes out and this C O again diffused from that further more C O from the outer gas uh, through this gas boundary layer to this and it reduce, reduce F E O and make the form the ion. Now, ion on the surface, uh, so hematite has reduced into the ion on the surface. Now, C O can uh, uh, has already reduced ion, there is no more oxygen left with which it can remove. So, but it still there is lots of part which is unreacted. So, what happened due to this uh, removal of uh, oxygen this ion becomes porous whatever ion is formed. So, C O or hydrogen has to diffuse now through this um, ion layer which is porous in nature to reach the lower oxides of ion and it, it reduce them further and the product gas also has to come out through this porous ion thing. Uh, layer and then has to diffuse also through this gas boundary layer. So, this process continues till the all pellet, pellet has reduced into ion. So, this sort of reaction of where the uh, diffusion and then uh, chemical reaction at the interface, uh, so diffusion of the reactant gas, uh, diffusion out of the uh, product cases, interface reaction. Um, formation of this uh, boundary layer. So, so, this sort of reaction which occurs is known as topochemical reduction mechanism. It is not just only associated with iron oxide even with other uh, sort of uh, uh, um, reaction which are similar to that um, uh, it can be associated. So, this is a typical topochemical reaction and there are many uh, steps which are involved into this and some important steps actually I have mentioned here. So, from the figure it is obvious that there are many steps involved in the reduction of hematite. The main steps are diffusion of reactant gas C or hydrogen through the gas boundary layer to reach the unreacted core as I said diffusion of this to reach the unreacted core, diffusion of the gas from the porous layer of ion. So, that is a porous layer of ion reaction at the interface of ion oxide. So, then it react at the interface, diffusion of the product gas um, CO2 or H2O from the porous ion layer and gas boundary layer. So, diffusion of those cases. So, these are the major one there are few other which can occur at mass transfer and other things. So, I am giving a very simple view of this uh, 
topochemical mechanism and very simple case uh, we are going to consider um, in order to get uh, some uh, reaction uh, rate or rate of change or uh, in the weight of the pellets. So, any of the ever mentioned steps can control the reduction process. So, when we say any of these steps can control the reduction process, uh, the meaning of it if, if CO is not reaching uh, properly or proper amount of CO is not reaching due to the uh, very low diffusion, then this process diffusion of gases from the layer let us say the from the gas it difficult for CO to reduce then this uh, then this is uh, sort of a uh, your uh, controlling mechanism because when you are not able to get more CO due to this uh, limitation other and though other reaction may be faster um, and can react and can form, but this could be like a limiting step. Similarly, if diffusion of CO is quite easy, easily can diffuse through the boundary layer, then diffuse uh, porous layer of iron suppose it is quite difficult gases to diffuse through that, then this may become a rate controlling step. So, the, the most resistant Tense offering step usually is known as the rate controlling steps. So, any of the ever mentioned steps can control the reduction process that is the meaning of it. Without going much into the details of it a simple model has been presented here assuming a dense spherical particle surrounded by the reducing cases in an isothermal condition. So, assuming a isothermal condition and the particle is surrounded by the reducing gases. So, uh, uh, so considering that and reaction rate is like a phase boundary control. If we consider that, then it can be expressed the weight loss with the time. So, the, that is why it is a negative is equal to K A C. So, D W over D T is the change in weight or mass of the pellet with time k is a constant, a is the decreasing surface area and c is the concentration of the gas. When we, we say decreasing surface area that is remind me this topochemical reduction mechanism is also known as shrinking core model. Though we are not a, assuming in that one uh, this uh, pellet is shrinking what we are still assuming pellet is having the same size what it has before. It might have become porous, but the size is not uh, has not changed, but in shrinking core model usually that is that is shrinking. So, this boundary also the interface shrinks and that is why we said the shrinking core model. So, um, C is the concentration of the gas. So, for a given time T it may be written as so W you know it is a weight of the particle of pellet and we are considering a spherical pellet. So, this can be written as volume of the particle multiplied by the density is going to give you the weight. So, this is the weight of the particle at a, at a particular time at that time at that instant. So, R is a variable equal to K which is coming from here, A is the area what we are talking. So, 4 pi R square for a spherical particle and C is the concentration that is over here. Now, these are usually constant the gas concentration in this. So, what we will do? We will combine this one into another constant K. So, and this when you differentiate it with respect to r. So, 3 3 will constant 3 pi r square will come and 4, 4 pi 4 pi will get constant through this. So, you will get minus dr over dt equal to k y rho. 
So, now this uh, so, so rho is the density of the unreacted sphere. Now, this is a very simple equation which you can integrate it and knowing that at time t equal to 0 that before starting the reaction your uh, radius uh, of the pellet is the initial radius. So, at t equal to t naught that is at the initial time radius of the pellet is, is equal to the initial radius of the pellet. So, if you integrate it between these limit then essentially so d r 0 to r naught and uh, uh, this is a constant d t 0 to t. So, you will get r naught minus r equal to k t y rho. So, this is uh, uh, the equation which can be simplified further. So, in, in if initial weight of the pellet is w naught then the fraction reacted alpha can be given as. So, now here we are introducing a definition of fraction reacted how much uh, fraction has been reacted of the pellet by the gas. Uh, so, fraction uh, it can be given by then. So, initial weight of the pellet minus the weight of the pellet at that time at an intermediate time divided by w not initial weight of the pellet is going to give you the fraction reacted that the way you define the fraction reacted which is nothing 1 minus w over w naught which is nothing 1 minus w as we said the weight of the particle at that uh, instant. So, it is uh, 4 by 3 pi r cube rho divided by weight, initial weight of the particle. So, this is 4 by 3 pi r naught cube that is the initial radius of the pellet divided by rho. So, essentially this would be get cancelled out or this r by r naught q equal to and you bring that one um, I here and this goes there. So, that becomes but this if you bring this one here this is there 1 minus alpha and r by r naught equal to 1 minus alpha r to the power 1 by 3. And this we did it because we are having our uh, relation here like this. So, this also will be uh, uh, divide by r naught because that is known. So, we combine this equation with this equation then we can get 1 minus 1 minus alpha to the power 1 by 3 equal to k rho r naught t. So, this gives us a relation uh, about uh, and from using this relation one, one can calculate the fraction reacted in a given time. So, many similar expressions can be obtained for the fraction reacted depending upon the uses of reaction controlling mechanisms which were described before. So, as we said there are many mechanisms um, uh, which can control the reaction and depending which mechanism you use you, uh, you have to start the uh, reaction equation this accordingly that will change and then you will follow with that one and you can get a little different expressions for that. So, um, now I and this is actually more about the topochemical reaction and if it is a non topochemical reaction which uh, where we said uh, um, there is no resistance to diffusion or reaction, uh, the reaction occurs everywhere. So, it follows the uh, first order reaction kinetics especially the for iron oxide reduction and in that way it is expressed in this form which gives you uh, this uh, fraction reacted things and can be con converted again to that form R by R naught. So, <coughs> this is the uh, for the non chemical uh, reaction the reaction kinetic is. So, I think now probably it is a time to un, uh, for a numerical by which you can understand uh, how this reaction kinetics works and how one can calculate the various parameter and other things. So, this example shows 
consider consider the reduction of a spherical boost type pellet by hydrogen into the metallic ion at 700 degrees Celsius. Calculate the unreacted radius of boostite after 3 minutes. The, the initial diameter of the boostite is 1 centimeter and density is 4000 kg per meter cube. The value of constant K may be taken as 0 0.0882 kg second per meter square. So, these are the parameter which is given and what is needed to calculate the red radius of the unreacted boostite after 3 minutes. So, what we need? We need actually first the fraction if you look at this one that fraction reacted is needed. So, first so mass of this pair we know 4 pi 4 by 3 pi r cube rho. So, density uh, is given radius is given. So, if we substitute these values we get the mass of the pellet or spare 2.09 into 10 to the power minus 3 kg. Now, we know one uh, from the reaction kinetin considering it is a phase boundary control 1 minus 1 minus alpha t is equal to k 0 r naught. So, here now everything is known k is given time is given 3 minutes rho is given r naught is given. So, if we substitute that value k t unit converted into second 3 into 60 180 second divided by density and the radius of the particle that gives you 1.7938 and which of course will give you when you bring this one to this side so subtract from 1 it will give you 0 0.2062 as and finally, 1 minus alpha will give you 0 0.59 and alpha will give you 0 0.41. So, the fraction reacted would be 0 0.41 really. So, alpha now you know fraction reacted uh, can be represented by this w naught minus w that is the radius at that time. So, here in this case the radius of the pellet after 3 minutes w naught is the initial one weight. So, from this we can calculate. So, we know the initial weight or mass of the particle is given this minus 4 by 3 pi r q r i 3. So, r i is the instantaneous radius. The radius at that time which here is at 3 minutes after that row divided by w naught initial weight of the uh, pellet and so that uh, uh, gives you 1 minus then after some manipulation of this 1 minus 8.01 into 10 to power 6 r i cube. Now, fraction reacted we know uh, we already calculated 0 0.41. Now, everything is known. So, r i cube would be this one and r i would be this one which means about 4.25 millimeter. So, 4.25 millimeter um, radius uh, would be there of the unreacted boostite after 3 minutes. So, which means almost 1.5 millimeter um, diameter has been reacted. Um, and formed iron. So, this gives you an idea how one can calculate the uh, various parameter or can obtain the unreacted uh, radius of the pellets and things.